Hey, Cash Course fans. Before we start the show, remember that you can get hundreds of free educational videos for all ages at PregnantYouKids.com. Subscribe today and never miss an episode. Step into most American supermarkets today and you'll find almost anything you could want. 20 different fruits and vegetables, an entire meat and seafood counter, snacks and sweets sourced from all over the country and the world. Wow, ketchup chips. <laughs> Step into a market in, say, North Korea, and you'll be lucky to put a meal together, assuming you have the money and the right to buy it all. What's happening? Well, what you're observing are economic systems in action. Economic systems are how individuals, communities, and entire countries organize what goods and services get produced, how they'll be produced, and how they'll be distributed. These systems are characterized along a spectrum. On one end, there are very restrictive markets called command markets. On the other end, there are less restrictive markets called free markets or capitalist markets. Where a country lands along that spectrum could have major consequences to its standard of living and quality of life. Let's look at each of these separately. First, a command or centralized market economy. Countries like Cuba and North Korea have this kind of market. Here, the government acts as the central planner or authority and commands all economic decisions and activity. They often control who can produce, what is produced, how much is produced, who can buy, how much can be bought, and at what price. In this economic system, the incentive of producers is to satisfy the government's demands rather than what the consumers want. What? This results in fewer choices and virtually no competition. So if you need a new pair of shoes, instead of having many producers to choose from, you only have a few. And the quality of the shoes tends to be lower because the producers don't have competition to push them to create better products. No problem. I'll just start my own shoe business. Well, in a command market, most, if not all, property is owned by the government. So not just anyone can start a business as they please. Even if you could start a business, the government can dictate all business decisions from the source of your materials to how much you can charge. Oh, this is pointless. You're right. Command market economies often result in lower standards of living, but there are high taxes, rampant government corruption, and heavy regulations. This makes it very hard for people to produce and choose what they need and want for themselves and their families. Is there another way? Sure. Now let's consider a free market economic system where, you guessed it, there's a whole lot more freedom. The United States and Switzerland have traditionally had this kind of market. In this system, the government is active but limited, existing to enforce rules and laws. There are few regulations and restrictions on the market a greater respect for private property, and a greater freedom for people to pursue their own self-interests rather than the government's interests. Supply and demand are allowed to play out naturally, leading to efficient allocation of scarce resources. This incentivizes competition between producers in the pursuit of their customers' interests, resulting in more choices and higher quality goods and services at competitive prices. Nice. So if I need to buy a new pair of shoes, I'll have more options, higher quality, and better prices? Yes. After all, businesses are competing for your money and not the approval of the government. You can even start that shoe business, sourcing your materials from wherever you want and setting your own prices. And if you don't want to sell just any shoes but want to focus yeah. on making great moccasins, you can do that. Specializing in what someone does best is a benefit of a free market. I'll call it my magnificent mocks. Magnificent! <clears throat> Free market economies tend to provide citizens with the highest standards of living due to less corruption, lower taxes, and higher levels of employment. That actually sounds like the best option. It is. But in reality, most economies have components of both command and free markets called mixed markets. Countries like Spain, France, and Italy fall into this category. You have the freedom to open your shoe business, hmm. but you must comply with government rules on how to run it. For example, Government regulations may require you to hire certain kinds of workers and pay them a certain amount. Or there may be rules on what supplies you can use and who you can buy them from. Well, I like having options. Why would anyone want less freedom? Well, economic systems don't exist in a vacuum. They're influenced by things like political organizations and ideas, government structures, and cultural and social trends. These can determine whether an economy will be freer and more innovative on one hand, or more restrictive and unproductive, stifling innovation on the other. Oh boy. Economic systems are a big deal. They determine the freedoms a nation enjoys and its access to everyday needs, 
whether it's materials for businesses or produce for dinner tables. Understanding the different types of systems and their pros and cons can help you be a more informed consumer and an empowered citizen, protecting the freedoms that you and those around you enjoy. Whoa, these moccasins are very good. Welcome to freedom, my friend. Yes, but uh, the ketchup chips, I don't think so. Yeah, let's not get those again. Watch more at PragerUKids.com. And parents, don't forget to subscribe.